So you really don't make this stuff up. Um, basically what we thought was going to be a just paying our rent to our landlord turned into, oh, by the way, there's been a mix up. You have to leave your apartment tonight. And so it's literally been maybe 15, 20 minutes since the landlord left saying that he'll pick us up with the car. We're packing everything up and he's going to take us to the next, take us to the next place. How are you feeling, David? Actually, I'll say that uh, our landlord has been really nice and he's, uh, he's done a lot for us and he's brought us uh, appliances when we've needed them and whatnot. But um, it's a two way street, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I did say that maybe a change would be nice. I didn't think that we would need that tonight, but okay. Let the adventures begin. Okay, well, in a whirlwind of events, we are in the new place, and um, the guy... <laughs> Do it again? No. <laughs> um, our landlord picked us up in his car and took all of our luggage and then drove us around, and at first I was getting a little bit worried that he was taking us to, like, a different part of town or, like, farther from Rachel and Emmanuel's and Amy and Joel's because um, I guess it's a one-way, so you had to, like go down quite far before you could then turn down another one way and actually get closer to so we're not too far away from where we were before maybe like 15 minute walk away but here's the place so i mean right off the bat you can tell it's a lot more open which i'm very excited about the bathroom is bigger it's still technically a water closet but like only because it doesn't have a divider between the water and the bathroom but i don't know why they don't just like put something quickly in because the the, the drain is there I don't know, I don't get it, but at least we actually have like a big shower, which I'm very excited about. And um, very high ceiling, I love that. I think we're kind of in like very what would be- Very high ceilings that transition to very low ceilings. Very low ceilings. <laughs> um, I think we're kind of in like, we're at the top, like a, the penthouse of like a five, six story building. Five, I think. Five. Uh, the kitchen is really big, which is nice. We have a full size fridge, which we don't have very often. And still just like the little uh, stove top, no oven. The washing machine is in the kitchen this time, or like in the actual counter part of the kitchen. But I kind of like the like wood finish on it. Do you like it? Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Little table, three little chairs, all of mm -hmm. our suitcases. All of the landlord's brothers came, like two of his brothers, mm -hmm. uh, so three guys total. They all just quickly carried all of our stuff. It was really nice. We felt very taken care of. And this then turns into kind of like what looks like a bit of a loft thing with like the wood and, and like these kind of really inviting seating arrangements. I think this is actually really cool. It just makes you want to huddle up with tea and a good book. And, and then the windows open so we can hear the whole nightlife over here. and. And that's the mall, um, the shopping mall, I think, with all the lights on it there. But it's just really cool. It just makes you want to kind of look out and at the nightlife. And we got some stars. I don't know if you can see the stars, which is nice too. Yeah. The seating is a bit uh, like college-esque. Yeah, it does kind of give that vibe. Yeah, I think it's really fun. Like I just, I actually would love to live in a place like this. And then last but not least is the bedroom. Um, so we got a bed. I don't think the mattress is as comfortable as the one that we were in, just it's a bit hard, but pretty good. And then uh, just a little cupboard in the hallway. So I think it's bigger. It's bigger than our mm -hmm. other place. It feels a lot bigger and I think it's all the high ceilings too and just how open it is with the windows. I'm excited. I feel like this is gonna be a fun week living here and Maybe longer, I don't know. Good? You like it? It's pass. Pass. Well, let's get unpacking. Everywhere. Is it liquid? Yeah. I should have checked. 
to make sure that it was uh, closed properly. Okay, well, I think that's it for tonight. Um, we've kind of mostly gotten settled. There's still a few things to unpack, a few things that we need to figure out. Like there's no um, cloths or like towels or anything like that. So we'll have to um, message the landlord and ask um, if they have something. And we're gonna get some food. We're pretty hungry. Good morning. So we had a great night uh, in our new apartment here. Um, we still haven't gotten any towels yet, but I got out of the shower, tried drying myself off with some paper towel that didn't work out so well. So I'm using David's t-shirt to, to dry my hair. But I thought today I would show a recipe that actually I've been finding to be really convenient. You know, when you are in a different country, sometimes you don't really find all the ingredients that you would for your normal recipes and stuff. And one thing that I really love to do for breakfast is like um, a low carb cobbler kind of thing, like crisp, like fruit crisp. And I was craving it a few days ago um, or a few weeks ago. And I thought, well, maybe I could try to make something. And I really only found two ingredients in the grocery store, which you could probably find in most countries anywhere, whether you go to a market or whether you go to a grocery store, you'd be able to find nuts and some kind of fruit, whether it's apples, berries, or really anything except for maybe citrus fruits. I don't think that would cook as well, but basically you can, like the bare minimum is just these two ingredients. And then if you find other things, like you know, we found some almond flour. So sometimes I put almond flour in, you could put real flour in, and I guess you need some kind of like butter, some kind of uh, oil to heat it up into. But um, if you find like coconut flakes, or really you could add anything you want to it. So I thought I'll show this recipe that's just so easy. Um, I think it's pretty tasty. I mean, for nuts and berries, basically. So it is a new kitchen, so we've got to get familiar with cooking in it. And I'll have to figure out how to turn this little uh, stove top on. So we could do that. So I've got a nice big thing of strawberries here. I'm just gonna wash them. We're gonna need some kind of cutting board. I did notice that this place isn't quite as stocked up as the others. I don't know if we have a cutting board. I think I've seen one. You've seen one? I think so. Here, scissors cutting board. Oh, is that it? There we go, thank you. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the strawberries at about like half, I think half. If they're big strawberries, you can maybe quarter them. It's really up to you. Like this is barely even a recipe. Got all of our chopped up strawberries there. Okay, and then you're gonna need some kind of butter. So I've got a little bit of butter left, and then you're gonna need your nuts. And so I have like a bit of cashews, adds a bit of salty, salty sweet to it, which is fun. And some walnuts. Nice. 
If you wash the dishes, I'll just get the lighter. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, thankfully I have the best husband. He ran out and got us a lighter. Um, so let's see if this works. I'm not sure which one goes with what, to be honest. I'm scared. I don't think I've ever actually used a lighter before. This one. You're the best. Thank you. Best husband ever. So then while the butter is melting, I'm actually just going to chop up a few nuts. Okay. And then you want to just add in all the strawberries. And then the nuts. You really don't want them to burn and um, you kind of want, you just really keep frying it up like this until the strawberries kind of reach like a, um, like strawberry pie kind of consistency. You can make it as liquidy as you want or just heat it up and yeah, that's just coming. Okay, well I think it is done. Uh, so you can see that the strawberries are kind of at like a good mushy, juicy, jammy kind of texture. Um, so I'm going to turn off the burner. And then this is where, like I said, if you want to, you can put a coconut on it, like just like shaved coconut. You could, well, I think the first time we did it, we had a little bit of like sugar-free ice cream that we put on it. And that was really yummy. And I mean, you could probably even put like yogurt with it if you wanted to like it could be a breakfast it could be a dessert i like the sweetness as is i don't like things too sweet um, but if you wanted to uh, sprinkle some sugar in it you can or some honey like honestly this is just the basics just kind of a easy quick recipe with basic ingredients that you could find probably anywhere in the world Someone's lowering their bag down from their window. <laughs> That's one way to do it, and you don't want to go down the stairs. Okay, well it is about day four in our new apartment here. Um, we're pretty much settled. Um, it's been nice. I thought I would share a second easy travel-friendly breakfast recipe with you, which is banana pancakes. Um, we've been getting a ton of rain the past couple of days. Last night was a really wonderful rainstorm. It was really cozy. I think it's just sprinkling right now, but that's been really fun. So anyway, I just wanted a nice cozy breakfast, so we're gonna try to brave it. I will link the recipe that I'm using down below and this is a bit of a science experiment for all of us because I've made this recipe back in Canada before with the almond flour but this recipe you can use either regular flour or almond flour depending on what you want and what you can find also. Um, thankfully Amy managed to by some miracle find some actual almond flour here in Turkey so that was really exciting. Um, really excited to use it. The recipe calls for baking powder, but it's optional and it's really hard to find baking powder here in Turkey. So it's kind of some of those things that these recipes that you might have had as staples back home when you travel abroad, 
sometimes you can't find those like ingredients that you would think are more like staple ingredients. So we haven't really found, we found baking soda, but not baking powder yet. So I'm gonna opt out of using baking powder in this recipe for the first time and we'll see how that goes. So for this recipe, you need uh, three or four ingredients. If you find the baking powder, you need bananas, you need flour and you need eggs. So let's get started. Oh yes, and I am totally wearing the exact same clothes as I did filming the other recipe. Don't judge. The first thing I'm gonna do is mash up some banana. So I think this recipe called for two medium bananas, but these are really small, so I think maybe I'll do four. I don't know, I feel like with this recipe, you can just eyeball it for the consistency that you'd like. take the fork and mash the egg into the banana. I think that way it'll make the banana a bit mushier. This might take a while without a blender. <laughs> later. Okay, maybe we'll add, as you can see it's fairly mashed now, but there's still some chunks. I think if we add the flour in now, maybe then when you mash it again, it'll, the consistency will be easier to mash. I have no idea. Either way, having some chunks in your banana pancakes, in my opinion, is pretty good, so it's not the end of the world. So then I'm going to add in eight tablespoons of this. We don't have tablespoons, so I'm just gonna use like a heaping teaspoon of um, flour. Cool, good enough. I think I'd like to put some chocolate chips in. We don't have chocolate chips, but we have this chocolate bar that I think I'm going to cut up and put in. Might be yummy. I think the chocolate is moldy. Expiration date is still till April 2022, but that looks pretty moldy to me. I don't think we'll eat that. Okay, let's try the other one. And this one's good, not moldy, so we've got a winner. Let's get cooking. Okay, so first thing I have to do is actually try to light the oven or the stove top without calling my husband because I've got to figure out how to do this on my own and it's scary. I've got to use the lighter and then turn it. I know I've done this so many times when we were living in Cameroon, but it's not coming back to me yet. So, and I think it helps when you have a bit of a longer thing. I, anyways, I will figure this out. <laughs> Well, it helps not to burn yourself and then turn the gas off as soon as you've lit it. So, um, I burnt my nail. Oh my goodness, I burnt my nail. Look at that. It's sent. I don't know if you can see that. I totally just burnt my nail. <laughs> oh, okay. 
I'm sure all of you travel veterans are just sitting here shaking your heads at me right now. Maybe lighters are hard to use when you have longer nails. I don't know. this lovely appetizing banana mash is um, to make the pancakes small. Because in my experience working with almond flour, and if you're probably using real flour, maybe it's different, but especially without the baking powder, it won't be as fluffy and it might be harder to flip. And so if you keep it small, it won't fall apart as much when you try to flip it. So let's give it a try. I don't even think I have a good enough spatula that will like be thin enough to get in there. So we might have to be a bit creative, but let's give it a try. So I'm gonna get some butter, I'm gonna put it in the pan. Okay, then let's get a, I wish Airbnbs, oh they do, they do give you ladles. Some Airbnbs don't put ladles in, so it's helpful when they do. These are going to be some chunky pancakes. Oh man. <laughs> This might be a total fail. That's uh, burning. So the spatula is like too thick to get in it. I wonder how we're gonna do this. I could maybe try flipping it. Oh, almost. the first one you know your first pancake never really turns out that great um it looks still kind of mushy and eggy i think this recipe is gonna be a fail i really do sorry guys <laughs> Well, the rest of the failed pancakes cook, I'm gonna cut up some strawberries to put on top. Okay, so I think I'm getting better at this. I think the problem is that, you know, when you don't know what the pans are like, each pan is a little bit different. Um, and so I need to keep adding butter every time because the spatula is too thick to actually get under the pancake instead it just like destroys it. So I have to actually flip the pancake like in the frying pan. Um, and so then there needs to be like a decent layer of oil underneath in order for the pancake to actually just like flip. And so I think it's actually working out. Funny thing about like each Airbnb you go to is that like, it's just like a new kitchen. 
you know, there's different type of spatula, different types of frying pans, um, all that stuff. And you just kind of have to figure out what works and what doesn't, or just go out and buy what, what you want, um, depending on how long you're staying in the country for. Um, I don't recommend making this recipe. Yeah. So I should preface that by saying, I don't recommend making the recipe in like a foreign kitchen. Um, because I think, well, first of all, I think with the baking powder, it makes the pancakes a lot fluffier when I used to make them in Canada. This is like a good recipe that's tried and true. It's just that without the baking powder, it's not as good. Um, without a good frying pan, without a good spatula, you can't really do it. And you really do need like some kind of hand mixer or blender. It's hard to get the uh, bananas to be, uh, mushed enough with just a fork, unless you want to be doing it for like an hour. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I think the problem is my flipping skills. Honestly, like I the pancake might look good until I flip it and then it just like <sighs> Okay, while well, the last one cooks, I'm going to microwave some peanut butter. We found some Jif in the grocery store, which is fun. And um, I'm gonna microwave some just to make a bit like a peanut butter sauce, pop the strawberries, and hopefully it'll make this breakfast somewhat edible. Yes. <sighs> oh my goodness, I'm just done. Done. Did you do it? No, it, the whole the whole recipe is an oops. Oh, and now I just turned off the burner. That's it. I'm done. Well, I rage quit, and this is the result. So, bon appétit, I guess. <laughs> Do you resent your pancakes? Yes. Moment of truth. No, you can't just have the strawberries. You gotta try the pancakes. Delicious. <laughs> well. Not your best. <laughs> but it's okay. That's an understatement. Actually, I think these were actually surprisingly better than I thought they were. I think when you add the peanut butter and the strawberries on top of it, it kind of masks, but the flavor is still good. I think it's just more the, the texture and the consistency. So trial and error, that's what it is. Um, especially with this recipe with the almond flour, I um, practice this a lot back home in Calgary with our frying pans, trying to get it down to a science. And uh, so it's kind of like restarting the process now, back in a new kitchen. But thanks for watching. So we did our grocery shopping yesterday, but who would have known that there's actually a farmer's market that, I don't know if it's every uh, Thursday that they do this, but it's a pretty big farmer's market just outside our window. Selling fruit, vegetables, and then over there, um, they have a whole bunch of clothes and stuff. But that's pretty cool, you don't even have to like leave your street. <laughs>